Welcome to Season Chasers. I'm Rob Freeman. Those that love nature and outdoor sports spend a lot of quality time looking for adventure throughout the year. The more you study, the more you learn about the peak seasons in nature. It's fun to know when it's best to go fishing or hunting, when it's time to pick blueberries, wild mushrooms, or native pecans. Sometimes the peak season is close to home, right in your own backyard, or it could be miles away near the mountains and the sea. Either way, this program will chase the seasons where the action is hot. Today on Season Chasers, we've got a couple of quality fishing trips that are close to home. We're going to take a trip back to northeast Oklahoma in search of some giant paddlefish. We're going to show you how you can collect some of these. Then it's on to southeast Kansas, where a lot of people are enjoying rainbow trout. Season Chasers, where we study, learn, and share the great outdoors. Thanks for coming along. Season Chasers, sponsored by CP Communications. Come see us at CP Communications, your locally owned and operated U.S. Cellular Authorized Agent in Pittsburgh, Parsons, Chanute, and Fort Scott. Locally owned for over 18 years. Kansas Land Tire, your Goodyear dealer at 9th and Broadway in Pittsburgh. O'Malley Implement, home of the John Deere Gator, South 69 in Pittsburgh. And by Blue Ribbon Farm and Home. And this is the Goofy Goat, right here. We're just a few days away from spring, but I'm here to tell you that uh, spoonbill season is in full swing down here at Grand Lake in Oklahoma. And this is going to be uh, going on my third trip down here. And uh, Jason and I have been uh, studying, and we've been learning, and uh, this lake has been sharing a few paddlefish with us this morning. And probably the only thing wrong with today's trip we didn't get to fish very long. Um, not done. Limit is one per person, and we got our limit before we got clear across the lake. And uh, has has to do with being here at the right time and using the right equipment, enough snagging weight to get down in 30, 40 feet of water. And uh, if you do everything right, here's what you might tie into. This is why we got up early to come down here. Now I'm not exactly sure how long this is. But uh, we're going to tag, we've tagged it already to keep. We're going to turn it in to uh, officials from Oklahoma Department of uh, Wildlife and Conservation. And uh, Jason caught one right after I did before we had time to turn around. But um, we're going to turn these in. They're going to uh, harvest uh, any eggs or any uh, thing that they can from these and clean the fish for us and have them ready for us at the cleaning station here in just a little bit. And we think that's pretty good uh, arrangement that they have down here in Oklahoma. And the people that run this program uh, are particularly nice, and uh, just about all conservation uh, agents I've come in contact with in uh, other states are real easy to deal with, but uh, the ones in Oklahoma seem to go out of their way to be nice more than they have to be. But uh, we really appreciate the cooperation that uh, we've had with them and what they've been able to teach us. And uh, we're going to make a phone call here and they're going to send a truck around with an aerated tank on it and pick up our live fish. So um, uh, the funds that, uh, that they make from this endeavor goes right back into conservation efforts here in Oklahoma and doesn't come out of any of the general funds. So this is a way that uh, uh, outdoor people are uh, uh, helping to uh, reinvest in the wildlife in, in the particular states and we think the officials here in Oklahoma are doing a particularly good job. Uh, they've got a tremendous spoonbill fishery here. These fish are around all year long, but they uh, accumulate in uh, tight quarters and uh, get ready for their breeding this time of year. And uh, that's how we're able to uh, locate them in this boat and troll with some particularly heavy tackle and uh, use these barbless treble hooks. And this is really a lot of fun. But uh, we're going to get these turned in and find out a little bit more about this process and share it with you on Season Chasers. Thanks for coming along to Oklahoma. Jason Ward, ladies and gentlemen. Today, you get to see part of a couple of trips. And you'll see it's quite a photographic challenge to capture all the action when you have three adults in a small boat this size. This time, 
Jason and I are joined by John Snyder, who's never landed one of these big spoonbill. John and I both have high hopes now that Jason has one. Pound range. Hoping maybe that one's a little male. And it doesn't take very long before we see John's out of water, way over. And he gets to horse in his first spoonbill. Yeah, this one comes in yeah, tail first. Here, try to avoid this hook. All right, there we go. Way to be, John. Right. Woo woo! <laughs> <laughs> hey. We'll go on over there. Way to go. Hang on, here we go. You might want to just cut that one, John. Watch that hook, because he's flopping that tail pretty good. Just go ahead and try to cut the, the bands around his tail. And we'll re-rig that, because you're done anyway. <laughs> that was not hard or not easy to land with that tail bite like that. When you're pulling them backwards, one, yeah. it's it's really difficult leverage and it pulls really hard. Okay, yeah, get your paperwork out. From here, I mean, it's not <laughs> like you had to had to go too far. There's still some good good catches in that old rod of his. All right. Well, we haven't been here very long, but I think we made some contact already. Now I didn't land one on the trip with John and Jason that day. But the next trip was a little bit luckier for me. We got big fish alarms going off here. Jason, there's a good reason for that. Alright, I'm on you. Get some shots of him, then I'll okay. land this guy for you. This is a bigger fish. What do you think? Pretty long. I was say, usually they're not done. Let me get up here. He had a little, little left in him, didn't he? He's pretty upset about the thing. You want a glove? Get in the boat. <laughs> okay, let me cut it. That's bigger than the other one, don't you? Oh. We'll see if we can put it on the on the scale. Bigger than what I thought. I think this one's been caught before. See the marks on the... Another Oklahoma pole bender. They haven't been here an hour yet. Took us longer to drive down here than to catch these fish, didn't it? Sure did. They had the radar on today.
right, Jason, that's a good one. A nice little male. Should be good eating. Cool. Let me get the glove and see what we can do with this guy. He's in the boat! We're all done. We're done. <laughs> and he just got a fresh one. This is a good spot. You're in a good place. Now this didn't take very doggone long today, folks. Jason helped me land mine and then he helped land his and my golly. Big fish, big lake. <laughs> How nice. Extreme environments can cause a spontaneous change in DNA, resulting in unexpected power and agility. Introducing the all new, all powerful Gator RSX 850i. 62 horsepower, a fully independent multi link suspension, and a top speed of 53 miles per hour. It's a whole new species of Gator. I'm Travis from Kansas Land Tire in Pittsburgh. We offer name brand tires like Goodyear, Dunlop, Kelly Springfield, Mastercraft, and virtually any tire for the job. We also staff ASE certified technicians to provide oil service, transmission and brake work, engine diagnostics, battery service, alignments, and more. We also now have a nationwide warranty and ask us about payment options like Goodyear Credit. Kansas Land Tire, 9th and Broadway in Pittsburgh, and authorized Goodyear dealer, see our ad and names and numbers. Why switch phone service because of bad reception when you can adapt like this family with reception antlers? Say goodbye to adapting to bad reception and hello to the highest network satisfaction of any national carrier. U.S. Cellular. Hello better. Introducing the Samsung Galaxy S3 for only $199.99 at CP Communications. Hi, I'm Chuck from CP Communications, the area's only locally owned and operated U.S. Cellular authorized agent, serving the local area for the past 18 years. Now this was my first year of snagging spoonbill. Uh, the only uh, other methods I'd ever seen this uh, done uh, was from the bank when they gather later in April uh, below the dams up in Miami and uh, Chautauqua, Kansas. And uh, somehow that kind of combat fishing just doesn't appeal to me. Um, it can be real dangerous when a lot of people pack in there with these great big uh, uh, long heavy rods and are slinging big hooks with a lot of weight around with the people on the other side and right next to them. And uh, it's also real difficult to land one if you've got a whole lot of other people's lines in the way. But uh, uh, my hat's off to those of you that uh, are good at doing that and uh, it's really tough to do. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, the method we've been using is going out early season. Uh, we've been almost a month earlier uh, than they're uh, going to be up later in the rivers. But uh, these uh, spoonbill are accumulating and uh, getting ready to head up the rivers when we're finding them out in the main part of the lake. And we're uh, going around in the boat with the graph on and trying to locate the big schools of fish and then uh, drag these big uh, heavy weighted hooks through it behind the boat about as slow as the boat will go uh, with the motor on. So uh, once you get one on out in that open water, it's a little bit easier to uh, uh, probably fight them uh, but then you still got a rodeo uh, to bulldog them on into the boat, even if you catch them out in the open water. So anyway, that's a really, really big time early season action and uh, something that uh, I really appreciate uh, uh, studying and learning and uh, sharing with others. In fact, uh, my old fishing buddy Ned from up in Alaska is uh, due here for a trip and he's going to get his first chance uh, to snag into a spoonbill here real soon. But uh, 
it's uh, early season before you know the water warms up enough and uh, the other fish the other game fish really aren't feeding much yet and uh, snagging is really a good way to go with these paddlefish because it seems like year-round they just swim around with their mouths open and uh, sift uh, nutrients out of the water through these great big gills so uh, that's what we hope to tie into and uh, part of you know the sport of this is locating where they are in the run and this boat fishing is early in the run whereas the fishing from the bank at the dams is toward the end of it. Now the fish we turned in today uh, are going to be rushed live to the uh, Paddlefish Research Center uh, that is uh, just south of Miami and uh, at that center there's a food grade uh, processing facility where they uh, harvest the eggs for human consumption in caviar and uh, the state uh, kind of regulates uh, how these are uh, uh, sold and everything because I think it's illegal for individuals to transport and uh, handle these across state lines. Well I don't want to have anything to do with the eggs of these so uh, we just turn them into the research center and with a 41 pound fish I'm told it can have up to 15 pounds of eggs in it. And uh, the 41 pound fish that uh, I boated on this episode uh, ended up yielding just over 8 pounds of really nice trimmed fillets. And uh, one of the good things about Spoonbill is it's uh, one fish that you can count on has no bones in it. There's actually no bones in the whole fish. They don't even have teeth, just a jawbone. That's about all they have. Oklahoma research officials do a really good job of uh, trimming out the brown meat on these. And uh, uh, the fillets that uh, I picked up uh, were probably suitable for putting in a meat counter. Uh, but you can fix this a number of different ways. You can fry it. That's how I've tried it so far with uh, my favorite uh, uh, season coating mix. But it's uh, firm enough that uh, you can even put it on the grill. And that's something I'm going to be trying here real soon. And uh, looking forward to that. But uh, big time action here in the springtime. And Spoonbill in northeast Oklahoma at Grand Lake is uh, probably one of the hottest things going until that water temperature gets up there and we'll start going for something else. That's how we do it on Season Chasers. The limit on these is one a day, and once you tag out, you're pretty well done for the day. But uh, I've never been so happy to be done fishing after uh, two or three hours of uh, uh, snagging with these uh, big one pound weights. But uh, once you get the fish in and uh, get it all tagged, it's <laughs> really a lot of fun. Now Oklahoma officials give you these tags to uh, keep for, I guess it's a transport tag, for uh, each of the fillets that you take home. And uh, here's a close-up look at uh, the band that uh, was off the first one that I caught. I've caught two fish so far. One was 36 pounds, one was 41, and that's on a total of five outings. So I don't tag out on every time, but uh, uh, the ones that uh, we've caught so far are really kind of fun to work with and uh, uh, it's going to keep me going back for the bigger ones. Uh, the lunker board up at the research center showed a lot of fish in the 70 plus pound range that are starting to be caught now and uh, that's what I'm looking for next. And before we head out trout fishing in southeast Kansas, just a reminder that uh, this is the season uh, that you should be uh, probably starting to look for some wild morel mushrooms and uh, we're going to be looking for those too and taking some pictures this year. And also when you're out looking for mushrooms it's a good time to look for antler sheds. The white-tailed deer, bucks, have dropped all their antlers pretty much by now and are starting to grow a whole new set for next year. And uh, these are the survivors from uh, this past uh, hunting season. And uh, anytime you find a big antler, you know there was a big deer attached to it that's probably still out there. And uh, that's a lot of fun to do this time of year. Coming up next, we're going to show you where you can catch trout in southeast Kansas here on Season Chasers. Spring has arrived at Blue Ribbon Farm and Home. Now's the time to prepare your garden for the spring weather ahead. Blue Ribbon has hundreds of varieties of top quality garden seed so you can get started. Whether you have a lap dog, a sport dog, chickens, or a goofy goat, Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has all the feeds you'll ever need. You talk about a goofy goat, and this is the goofy goat right here. 
Why switch phone service because of bad reception? When you can adapt, like this family, with reception antlers. Say goodbye to adapting to bad reception and hello to the highest network satisfaction of any national carrier. U.S. Cellular. Hello better. Introducing the Samsung Galaxy S3 for only $199.99 at CP Communications. Hi, I'm Chuck from CP Communications, the area's only locally owned and operated U.S. Cellular authorized agent, serving the local area for the past 18 years. The season is spring, and it's uh, getting green all over the place, and uh, uh, a lot of people have been having cabin fever, even though we had kind of a light winter. But it's a good day like this to uh, get out and do a little fishing, and uh, we've got a really unique place here in southeast Kansas where um, uh, you can find rainbow trout, and that's something Kansas isn't really known for, but uh, we're here with Rob Fajeri from uh, Kansas Department of Wildlife and uh, Parks and Tourism now. And Tourism. And Tourism. <laughs> and uh, tell us what, uh, we just did a fresh stocking here today. What, what's, uh, how do you manage this pit here in southeast Kansas? Well, we do... Uh Trout stocking starting in October. Uh, we do bi-weekly stockings. Stock nearly 16,000 fish every year. Um, so it's a it's a really great thing for for our anglers. Well, now um, as far as um, uh, you know, Kansas is really not known as a as a trout state, but this is a unique place here that will support trout populations year round. Is that correct? Right. Right. We start. This was the first trout uh, fishery in the state. It's uh, started in 1986. Um, so this this lake has some unique characteristics where it doesn't typically typically stratify during the uh, summer months, and uh, there's a, a zone from about 20 to 40 feet throughout the summer that um, uh, where the water is cool enough and has enough oxygen in it to support trout through the summertime. So that's really pretty unique in in Kansas. So uh, so uh, we. Uh, stock trout for eight years uh, through trades with other states um, primarily Colorado but we also got fish from uh, Wyoming Utah and Montana uh, but now with the with the trout stamp um, we stock trout in 34 locations across the state now so the but this is one of the very very few that um, uh, will support trout year round. Excellent. Now I got my trout stamp today and uh, uh, once you get that with your license, uh, what are the daily limits uh, here at the trout pit? Well for rainbow trout the limit is five fish per day and that's the creel limit uh, statewide. Uh, for kids that, that don't have a license that um, they don't need a trout stamp and they can catch two fish per day. Uh, if they'd like to buy a trout stamp, they, they can also get five fish per day. Uh, we are stocking some browns in this trout, in this pit now, and, and uh, uh, the limit on those is one fish per day and they've gotta be 20 inches, so. That's a big we're trout. Trying to, we're trying to grow some big, big browns in here. Excellent. Now, I started coming out here shortly after it opened in the 80s, and it's been a while since I've been here, and you guys have made some tremendous improvements uh, for fishermen that, uh, uh, when I first came here, it was pretty bare bank, but what are some of the things you've added since, uh, since the 80s here? Well, we've really improved the shoreline access for, for anglers. Um, um, we've got a sidewalk now leading down to it and a, a handicap accessible dock. Uh, we've got two cabins now located here on the site, so uh, if you'd like to come down and spend the weekend or, or whatever, you know, it's a, it's a really nice place to, to go. So uh. Here's a look at the inside of the cabins. There's room for up to six. This is the highest occupancy rate throughout the state as far as wildlife areas are concerned. This one, one next door, so, hmm. you know, there's some other cabins on some wildlife areas, but so far these have been rented more than the rest of them. But people enjoy it. I mean, they're full, especially during, you know, rifle deer season, and looks like we got a turkey hunter next door. I saw he got a archery target out anyway, so fishing poles and archery target, he probably got his turkey tag and a little fishing at the same time. 
Uh, we've got the boat ramp right here, and uh, but these kids are from uh, uh, Cherokee schools, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, they're just coming down for a, a field day and take advantage of the trout fishing. Well, we think that's great any time that uh, uh, kids are, are taught about uh, the outdoors. This is a real good experience for them, and uh, hopefully uh, this is something they'll get to do later in life also. Wow, we hope so. All right, now as far as, um, uh, uh, is there any um, you know special advice you give people that haven't been down here before? Oh, um, <laughs> Of course, the best fishing through the through the fall and winter months. Um, through the summertime, the fish are deeper and they aren't as active and they're a little more difficult to catch. But uh, throughout, we we start our stockings about uh, uh, the middle of October and they continue through May. So we stock 935 fish every two weeks. So you've got consistent success. Uh, uh, when we when when we first started this project, we got the fish from from the other states, and we would have to stock once or twice a year. So once we stocked 5,000 fish, <laughs> you know, you it, you couldn't hardly miss for a few weeks, and then and then it got pretty slow. But now with with the biweekly stockings, uh, the it's pretty consistent fishing really. So you have a, a lot of time to be able to come down here and have a good chance of catching some fish. Great. Well, as uh, I know a lot of people do catch and release, but here it's release and catch, right? <laughs> <laughs> you release them and we get to catch them, right? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Rob Frigeri from uh, uh, Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks and Tourism. And uh, thanks for having us out here at the Trout Pit. You bet. My pleasure. Thanks for being on Season Chasers. <laughs> it didn't hurt a bit, did it? No. Sure. <laughs> Trout Pit is located near 100th Street and Lawton Road in Cherokee County. To make cabin reservations, go to this Kansas website. Another salute to Southeast High School at Cherokee, Kansas for taking students on a really nice field trip like this. Tune in each week for some of the stuff you just won't see on other shows. Outdoors, wildlife, and a life of adventure. Being on the lookout for natural foods and making the most of what the wildlife provides. Study, learn, and share the great outdoors with someone who's important to you.